In Dingwall, flooding from the River Peffrey has affected the whole community. Using natural flood management techniques, the River Peffrey Restoration Project is looking to reduce this issue, whilst also turning the area into a haven for wildlife. So the, the project started when I was asked to look at this piece of land and look at options for improving habitats. And in doing that, it quickly became apparent that we could do something a bit more interesting and a bit more radical and, and started to think about re-meandering the river through the floodplain here. Some of the things that were driving this project were things like flooding um, and obviously we're getting wetter winters now and, and the Peffrey unfortunately floods the town of Dingwall which is downstream here so could we do anything about that and also the river was very straight so it wasn't very interesting from a biodiversity and wildlife point of view so those were the two main challenges we were trying to address. So we completed the restoration work on this site but we really wanted to scale that up to the catchment as a whole and, and do a lot more of this, this kind of thing. So the Nature Restoration Fund really enabled us to do that and it was, it was a game changer I suppose in allowing us to think about a, a big range of quite substantial work in the catchment as a whole that together we think could make a big difference to biodiversity and, and flood risk. So what we're looking at here is the old straightened River Peffrey, which was straightened about 200 years ago. And then at this point is where the new channel which we've, we've created kicks out into the floodplain and rejoins the old channel about 700 metres downstream. And then we've dug these ponds and backwaters which are really for enhanced biodiversity and, and flood storage benefit. And we've also planted some trees down the side of the new channel. So one thing that's important for fish is, is having shade and, and having cover in the channel. Here we've just buried some big branches of fallen trees to kind of kickstart and replicate that process before the trees start to regenerate and grow beside the river. One of the things we did was introduce what we call large wood structures. So they're basically big long stems of, of trees with the root plate still attached and they're, they're buried in at regular intervals down the, the river channel. And that's really to, to encourage erosion and deposition of, of these gravel features, which is a natural river process and creates a more diverse habitat for fish and other wildlife. So when it comes to selecting sites like this, really we're relying on the goodwill of, of farmers and landowners who are willing to effectively give up land to, to help with, with the project. So this is a, a fairly wet bit of ground that isn't the most productive and we're very grateful for the farming family here to be getting involved with the project and, and letting us do these sorts of things in their field. By doing works like this, we're, we're storing more carbon. We've got more trees, we've got more wetland habitat, we've got peatland restoration in the headwaters of the catchment, but we're also increasing biodiversity. We've definitely got enhanced fish habitat uh, is, is much better from, from a fish point of view. We're also seeing more bird life and, uh, and, and some interesting species of birds that have already come in. So, so we are seeing uh, quite a number of benefits. So at the moment, we're really developing the, the next phase of the project. So we're working with uh, farmers, crofters, landowners to design and figure out the precise nature of the restoration work that we can do. So that's going to be things like more uh, re-meandering, it's going to be uh, creating uh, riparian woodland habitats, flood storage channels, flood relief channels, all that kind of thing, which are all kind of linked to those, those objectives that we, we, we set. Mm -hmm.